Good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here on Friday morning in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. Okay, I'm pumped up and ready to go. Must be my coffee. <laughs> Got some, uh, I don't know, special roast coffee for Christmas and all put jazzed up here. Uh, the title of today's talk is uh, Put Some Trinity on It. The Holy Trinity. Put, put Some Trinity on It. I, just, I, I wrote that because I was reminded of Chris Rock when he was talking about uh, uh, growing up where his mother put Robitussin on everything. If, if you've got any kind of problem, take some Robitussin, put some Robitussin on it. <laughs> put some Robitussin on it, you know. And, uh, you know, and, and th this is what, like, families in the past, to put family, there'd be one thing you'd put on everything iodine on it or uh, castor oil or whatever. It'd be like one thing that would cure everything. So what's the one thing that would cure everything? That's that's the metaphor here. Well, this story, this, this talk is about the Holy Trinity that cures everything. Put some Trinity on it. Well, wait a minute. What What is the Trinity? Are you Catholic? What is that? Well, you know, the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's a big triangle, right? The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the core of Catholic Catholicism. We the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. It's the Nicene Creed. It's in the it's in the Protestant religion too, I think, isn't it? In the Nicene Creed that you repeat, I believe, particularly in the Episcopal I guess I, I think the Presbyterians do it. I, as far as I, I don't go to all the churches, but it seems to me that they that the Nicene repeat the creed is repeated to begin the service. I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy and the Brave. It's kind of like a mantra. It's kind of like the Prashna Paramitra mantra. It's it's kind of like a repeat this mantra, but nobody knows what it means, and nobody knows how to apply it. How do you apply the mantra? How do you, you know, what good is Robitussin if you don't put it on so If you don't drink it, I guess you drink it. What, you know, what good is something if you don't know how to apply it? Well, nobody knows how to apply the Trinity. It's just, it's just a rote. It's just a dead ritual. I believe in the water. All right, let's get on with the service. Something you have to do. It's kind of like grace. Thank you, God, for this. Yada, yada, yada. And where's the food? Let's get to the food. You know, oh, God, will you shut up? Let's eat. <laughs> so, so anyway, that, that's why I, I don't really like saying grace at the meal because it's so phony. I don't really believe it. Uh, anyway, because you can't... I don't want to get on that area either, but we're talking about the Trinity. So what is the Trinity? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh, well, let's take a road trip. I've got a friend of mine who's going to Baja. Maybe she's there. And I was writing about this, and I said, all right, so we on the road trip to Baja, you are the driver, you are the car, the going, and you are the road. You are this. This is the trend. This is a, a triangle right there, right now. You are listening to me, right? You are listening. You something is listening. The listening is the doing, and the thing you're listening to is the object. So the doer is is the sun. The situation, the the subject of the talk, the, the situation is the Father, and the verb, the doing of it, is the Holy Spirit. So there's three there's three things needed for every situation that you're in. There's you, the subject. There's the verb, whatever you're doing, and the thing being done, whether it's the thing being done is is uh, this talk you're listening to. So that's that's the Trinity. 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a verb. It's an action. The Father and the Son. The Father is the whole. The Son is the particular. The thing doing something. And we just, everything is this. Also, everything is the Holy Trinity, but it's broken up into the content of the situation. So every situation we look at, it's broken up into I'm in a situation, I'm doing something in a situation. And the situation can be uh, just walking in a park, or it can be somebody screaming at me, or calling me an idiot, you see, or loving me, or whatever the situation includes the subject, you doing something, or being something's being done to you, you're either doing something, or something is being done to you, but there's a verb in it, there's an action, and then, then there's a thing being done or done to you. There's an object, subject, verb, object. That's the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the, you know, the, the doer and the, the, the subject and the object and the doing, you see. But we break it up because we think and we know and we're conscious through language. And language is the mind, is the conscious mind's operating system. In the same way, if you got a Mac, an Apple, a, a, a Mac or a PC, there's an operating system. Uh, the Macintosh operating system is different from the Windows operating system. Remember the PC wars of the eighties? The PC Windows was kind of clunky and and it was so complicated. And the geeks loved it, but the but the uh, natural man, the intuitive, the creative man, the Mac man liked the Mac because it was fluid and into. But I digress. But you see, there's two operating systems. Well, language is the operating system of consciousness. Words, everything is named. We live in a known world. We live in a named world. I live in the, I, this room is full of names. Lamp, picture, and every picture can be divided up into more names. Oh, there's a picture uh, of uh, yada yada. So we can just keep, we could spend a whole lifetime in one picture just taking it apart. But it's all words. So what is reality? What is real? Well, it's the whole room. If you walk into a room, this is where we get into gestalt psychology, when you walk, and Zen, when you walk into a room, you are the room, but then you look around and say, a name, or, and look, oh, there's, even the room is a name, room, or it, what room, what, what room, well, I'm in, I'm in the foyer, it's a name, you know, and then there's things in the foyer, including me. So it's all broken up. It's all fragmented. The Trinity is broken up. So what's the Trinity here? Well, I am talking in a room. Okay? Are they separate? Can you really separate? Can I separate myself from the talking and the room? I can do it in language. I say, well, I'm here talking, and the room is all around me, and I'm a thing in the room, like the chair, and, and, uh, and the little Buddha's on here, and the, all these things, and I'm a thing in here, and language does that, you see. So it breaks everything up into workable parts. And it's, and it's workable by grammar, subject, verb, object. I'm doing something in a room, you see. We just, that's consciousness. But before that, before it's broken up into things, there is pure awareness. So this background awareness, this background awareness is not broken up and has no language. Awareness, the background awareness has no words. It's just silently aware of everything. So I am aware. You can, I know I'm in a room. You could not convince me that I'm in some other room. I know it. 
It's irrefutable. It's self-evident. It's self-evident that I'm in a room because, because I know it. But I don't know it as a word. No, the, the knowing I'm in a room is prior to the room, the foyer. I mean, you see. Well, what room are you in? Well, well, I'm in the foyer. I'm in the hallway, you see. But before that, I'm in no room. <laughs> I'm in not knowing. I'm aware. The awareness is unspoken. The awareness of who, where, what I'm doing is prior to the consciousness of I'm doing something in a room, you see. So this awareness as is unconscious. We just assume it. We don't even... We don't even question it. I, I, know I'm, I know I'm in a room. Well, then what room are you in? Well, now I can talk about that. Or I might walk in the living room and I think I'm, oh, am I? And then, I, oh, suddenly I thought I was in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm in the living room. <laughs> anyway, so the Trinity, what we're looking at it here metaphorically, mystically, you see, is this magical formula of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the subject, the object, and the verb, which is whole before it is broken up. So the Trinity is a mystery in the same way that your consciousness is a mystery. Who are you before you are broken up into things? Who are you before you are broken up into Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Who are you before you are broken up into subject, object, verb, you see? Who are you? Who am I? I can't say, who are you? You're just another object. The question is, who am I? Who am I before I'm broken up into Father, Son, and two parts? Language, subject, object, verb. Who am I before language? What is my face before my language is born? Or parents, you see. Parents is my language. Who am I before my thinking? is born. My language, my consciousness is born. We think consciousness is everything. It's just a little tiny island. What's the vast ocean around of being, of awareness around this little island of me, you see? So we, try, we turn everything that comes upon the shore of our island into the island. We can't go beyond the island because the island, beyond the island has no language. <laughs> No words out there. It's unknown. We can't go there because we don't have have a word for it, you see. This is what Avatar is all about, going beyond consciousness, but that's another story. So the whole idea of the Holy Trinity in Catholicism has a mystical dimension to it that is lost. Maybe it wasn't lost back in the Middle Ages, you see, but in the in the in the creation of the Catholic theology and all that. There's the mystery of the Trinity. You know, what is it? Trinity, what is that? Well, the Protestants came and just broke it up. Said, the hell with that. Throw that out with the bathwater. Everything is what it is. Everything is what it, it's called. Everything what it's known. Everything is what it is. The room is the room. The chair is the chair. There is no Trinity. There is no three that's one. There is no... Uh, 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 mystery here. It's all rational. It's all known. It's all knowable. It's all conscious. Scientific. You can figure it out with science. Can't find with it. Where's the Trinity? You see, you can't find it. So it doesn't exist. You can't name it. You can't know it. You just so it doesn't exist. So it's thrown out with the bathwater. So the Protestant Protestant viewpoint is not only religious viewpoint, it's a scientific viewpoint <clears throat> that breaks up mystery, that breaks up the magic. It makes everything knowable. And what's knowable is knowable through language. So everything is, I'm here, I'm doing something in a world there, you see. That's just the way we see everything. But on the road trip to Baja, to conclude, you are the driver, you are the car, you are the road, you are the trip, you're the whole thing. The, the, 
Zen and the motors and the, and the uh, art of motorcycle maintenance was about this. There are two viewpoints. There's a viewpoint of the mechanic who loves to fix the motorcycle. That's the Protestant view. Everything's a thing and a part. You got the motorcycle, the engine, you got the parts, and they are all rationally designed, and you just love fitting them back together. And then there was the joy of riding the motorcycle, where you are one with the motorcycle and the road and the driver, and it's all one joyous. That's why people love to ride motorcycles, because you're forced by the danger of the damn thing to be one with the motorcycle and the road. It's a liberation. In the car, you can sit back there and drink coffee and daydream. The car is safe. You're in, I'm the driver in the car and the road. It's all separate. But on the motorcycle, you, if you're really on the motorcycle, you are one with the motorcycle, the road, and the drive. There's no separation. And we experience that as the joy of being. And what I'm suggesting, that's the joy of the Trinity. The Trinity, when applied like Robitussin to your everyday life, is joy of being one with what you're doing. You are the Son, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. You are the subject, the object, and the verb. You see, it's all one. You can't break it apart. Once you break it apart, boop, it's flat, it's gone. It, it's like, well, how can I, when do I get out of here? It's, you know, I got to get out of here. But in the joy of riding the motorcycle and the joy of being the one, you don't want to get out. <laughs> you don't want it to end. It's like going to a movie. When you're in the movie, you're one with the movie. You don't want it to end. Somebody talks next to you. Stop talking. I'm in the movie. Anyway, thanks for dropping in. But think about that. You know, find the Trinity in your life. Apply the Trinity to your life. And you'll experience the joy of being what you are. Thanks for dropping in. <laughs> stop. Stop it. <laughs>